Welcome back to Building a Main. Last time we set ourselves the goal of completing River of Blood to obtain the Sun Spear and use it to train Slayer and Invention. In order to complete River of Blood we have many quests to complete and some relatively high skill requirements, including 76 woodcutting, 64 crafting, 70 fletching, 78 slayer, 76 hunter, and 79 construction. We also need to increase basically all of our combat skills to 78 as well. So that's the goal, let's get to it. Our first quest to knock out is Creature of Frankenstrain, which leads into Garden of Tranquility, but while we wait for our plants to grow in said garden, we got on with our reaper task for the day, which was a Barrow's Reaper. We didn't get anything, but I can feel a drop coming soon, since Barrow's is about a 1 in 15 drop rate for any piece. And since we're in no rush to level up our combat stats, since we've got plenty other to be working on, I'm just going to level them up via Slayer and Reapers. So after our plants have grown, we complete Garden of Tranquility. Thankfully we didn't get too unlucky with anything dying, so this was pretty quick, all things considered. And we basically just did our Reaper and some Ivy while we waited. I also decided to go ahead and upgrade the Wicked Hood with every single talisman possible. This causes it to give pure essence instead of regular essence, which means we can use it to craft stuff like bloods and nature runes. So we can basically once a day use this to craft a bunch of astral runes and get a bit of extra profit on our daily runs. Next up we progress towards Defender of Varrock, which required us to complete What Lies Below, and the Temple of Ikov. And of course we completed Temple of Ikov for Armadil instead of Lucian. And with Defender of Varrock completed, that is our first bigger quest requirement out the way for River of Blood. The first skill requirement we've got done out of the way is 76 woodcutting. I've been AFKing this on my phone for quite a while, so this was pretty likely to be the first one. So since it was on my phone I don't actually have a clip of getting it, but to be honest I was just standing at Ivy and chopping, and then I got 76 woodcutting, so you're not really missing much. But the next one I'm going to be working on is Slayer, so let's get to that. Okay, so we've got a Dagonoth Slayer task now, and I'm going to see, try and see if I can get a Dagonoth King's Reaper assignment to go along with it. Oh, that's perfect. So, yep, the plan is to do the Dagonoth King's Reaper assignment alongside the Slayer task and just camp Rex for the entire Slayer task. It'll be a huge amount of, in my case, defense XP because I've got magic set to defense and a bunch of Slayer XP as well as getting our Reaper task done out of the way. This is probably going to take most of the day to get through this entire task, but I'm just going to save spot just Rex for it. Okay, we finally got a big drop right at the end of the task. I'm so glad I didn't bail on this and go and do regular Dagonoffs halfway through. We finally got a Berserker Ring, which is a 5 mil drop. And from that Dagonoff task, we also got 70 defense, which is high enough to now wear all of the God Wars Dungeon power armors, which is Bandos, Subjugation, and Armadil. I'm not going to try and overbuy the Armadil armor because it's already pretty expensive and we're in no rush to get it, but I just got the full set of Subjugation and Bandos, at least minus the helms for now while we're still using the Slayer Helm. In total, this is about 50 mil, but these are basically going to be our Slayer sets for life. Once again, back at the old cow fights, absolutely love this task, ton of XP, ton of charms. But this is big because it's our 50th Slayer task, which gives us 180 Slayer points. So if we head back to a Slayer Master, we can now pick up the ability to fletch broad arrowheads, which is going to be our method for getting 70 fletching. It's more expensive than fletching bows, but honestly, it, fletching bows is so slow that the cost difference is 100% made up by the speed difference. And that is one small favor complete. Another one of the quests that wasn't quite as bad as I remember it being. I remember that being way worse than that. But I'm going to check the lamps into summoning just to get that up to... Just to get that level up so we can get more use out of our charms. And next up is King's Ransom. And that is King's Ransom Complete, which gives us a bunch of XP, the hair clip, which means we no longer need to buy lockpicks, and access to the Nightwave's Training Grounds mini quest, which unlocks the level 70 prayers. So we're going to go knock those out.
And that is the Knight's Wave training ground mini quest done, which gives us access to all the prayers and a bunch of XP. So we'll take all those level ups and now we need to go and train up to 70 prayer. So the plan for 70 prayer is Infernal Ashes at the Chaos Altar. This was the most budget friendly option I could find for training prayer and honestly the only real competition was like burying big bones with burial powders. But I needed to bury like 10,000 of those so it still wasn't going to be cheaper and wasn't going to be quicker so this is the best we got. Sure dragon bones with burial powders is quicker but not by enough to offset the cost. There we go, 70 prayer achieved. I was slightly off on my calculation, so I had to come pick up a few extra Inferno Ashes just to scatter and finish this off. So this now gives us Piety, Rigor, and Augury prayers, which are going to be incredibly useful for Slayer, Bossing. Unfortunately, we also increased our combat level to 101 during that, which means we now have access to a better Slayer Master in Duradel, but 100 combat, if I remember rightly, is the threshold for a bunch of Reaper tasks that we definitely can't do. So Reapers are probably going to be rerolled a bit more from now on. We have a new crafting training method, which is Earth Battle Staves, which are surprisingly quite profitable to train your crafting with. The only problem is the buy limits aren't very good, you can only buy about half an hour of crafting training for every four hours, and it's relatively expensive in terms of initial investment, but overall it's pretty good. And also to date the clip, if the snow at the GE didn't give it away, we are currently in December, so we have access to the Festive Aura, which we're just going to try and remember to use, not going to really sweat it, going to try and put it on construction if we can, but if not, crafting's fine too. Okay, last night on mobile I trained some fletching, which we did with broad arrowheads, or well, well, broad arrows. It kind of breaks my little rule of always trying to do things that are profitable, but fletching is just so slow if you don't do broad arrows that the time you save by doing them definitely turns into more money than you would make by bow fletching instead. And then I've also been doing some fire making because we need to get that up to a decent level. and. While we were doing some fletching, we actually got our first pet on the account, which is the Flow Pet. Now this is kind of cool, because I don't think I actually have the Flow Pet on any other account, but my first ever 99 on any account was fletching, because one of my money makers back then was making maple unstrung longbows, because um, they were commonly used for elk training, and it was quite profitable. So I got 99 fletching making maple lo unstrung longbows and that took absolute hours but it made me like I think it was like 20 mil or something which back then was a huge amount of money to me. So I uh, have good memories of the fletching skill even though now it's just become broad arrow simulator. Okay, I'm not sure where I got 48k Dungeoneering tokens from, I'm assuming from weekly challenges and stuff, but that actually lets us pick up the Scroll of Cleansing, which is very useful for training Herblore, as it will basically give us, I think it's like 10% more um, potions for our inputs, basically. So like, we buy 1000 Renars, we get 1100 Renar unfinished. And Scroll of Proficiency is going to drastically reduce the cost of training construction. Now, scroll proficiency does mean that training construction, you want to make items that need just enough to trigger it so that it has the highest chance of saving you the most planks. I don't think I'm going to go for that. I'm just going to go for speed and make the item that needs as many planks as possible just to get the XP rate up. The other scroll we need to get hold of is the one for smithing, but we're not training smithing for a while, so that could wait until we've amassed some more tokens. Okay, time to get our first task from Duradel. I debated sticking with Summoner since she tends to assign some easier tasks. If we get a few duds from Duradel, we'll go back to Summoner, but for now, let's see what we get. Fungal Magi or Black Dragons? Fungal Magi are pretty good. 
in order to get the funds for training stuff like construction, fire making, etc., I had to liquidate some of the profits from our daily shop runs. So I'm going to just take that quick 12 mil. The Earth Bow Staffs aren't selling quite as quick as I had hoped, but they do sell eventually if you just leave them at the uh, trading price. It's just a low volume item. I also just twigged that I never changed my character back to Mayo after doing the after doing recruitment drive, so that's now sorted. It's time for the first round of Yaks to give up their XP. That is 33k XP per Yak. That is 330k farming XP we're about to get. That is so good. I decided to actually go through all the River of Blood prerequisites and make a list of all the requirements, ones I've met, ones I haven't, and just start prioritizing them. So the ones we've done are 76 woodcutting, 64 crafting, 72 mining, 63 farming, and 76 fire making. All of these ones are pretty easy to get, it's just some gathering skills and then crafting, which is pretty profitable. But the next set to work on is 80 herb lore, 75 fletching, I originally thought it was just 70, but oops, 79 construction, and 76 hunter. Herb lore, I'm just going to try and find the most profitable potion that I can. Fletching, broad arrows, construction, peak planks, and hunter, I'm going to do via wily gigs, because those were pretty fun. And then finally at the bottom, it's the combat stats. 78 attack mage and range, 75 defense and strength, 80 constitution, and 78 slayer. The plan is just do Slayer until we hit 78, and then just find something good to kill for the rest. Okay, so we just did our first bit of herb training with summoning potions, and I've checked the trading price for 4 dose and 3 dose, and it makes more to sell them as 4 doses. So we'll drop these in here for 8, 4, 9, 9 each. So we spent about 15 mil, I would guess, on um herbs and secondaries for these so this is a huge amount of profit and i will if these sell then i will definitely be doing another round of these because that will be 50 more profit on getting 80 herb lore, which is actually insane okay i wasn't recording because i wasn't expecting anything or if i was i was just expecting a minor barrows piece but our first drop from barrows is an amulet of the forsaken that is huge so, yeah, I was just doing the daily reaper. I was not expecting anything, especially not something this big. That's like easily 15 mil. That's that's huge. Or we could save it for the Darox Relic. Probably sell it for now. Okay, let's see what it actually sells for. Okay, I have no idea what this thing trades for. I'm going to just leave it in there at guide price. I believe there's a Discord which lists current trading prices of items like this, so I'll probably try and find that so I can actually sell it for a reasonable amount instead of undercutting myself. But yeah, that, that was incredibly lucky. Easily the best drop we could have got of arrows. So opening up our metamorphic geodes from our mining grind, we got some Corrupted Ore, Crystal Triskelium Fragment, some Hydrix Bolts, an Effigy, which can't use right now, and some elite clue scrolls. And our plan for clue scrolls going forward is to just keep downgrading all of them to easy clues. And then when we decide to, we'll just run a load of easy clues all at once and sell off the alchemical onyxes that we make. Another benefit to all those geodes is that we now have every single strange rock for the strange rock collection. So we're gonna add those to the plinth. And there we go, tons of XP drops. This takes a lot longer than I remember. There we go. Now we get to complete the statue. And it's gonna explode. So we do it all over again. And that is Song from the Depths complete. I originally didn't complete this because I thought that if I didn't complete it, QBD wouldn't be assigned as a Reaper. Unfortunately, as soon as you hit 60 summoning, QBD can be assigned. Shouldn't be too, too difficult. But yeah, we're definitely going to need to stock up on some supplies for it. Okay, it's time for my first QBD fight in six or seven years, so let's see how this goes. Can't stop me now. I got no life. 
<laughs> that was a nearly five minute kill, but we we got there. And yeah, we didn't use all of our food, so we'll take that as a win. Not the fastest kill, but honestly not that bad for being so long. And that's where we're going to be wrapping up this episode. Made a bunch of progress towards River of Blood, got a bunch of our skills knocked out, many of the quests done, and we're still making good progress with our Reapers. So things are trugging ahead quite smoothly. Thank you all again for watching. If you reached this point in the video, you probably enjoyed it, so you know what to do. And hope to see you all again next time.